Yes. Continue. But Simon answered and said to him, But whenever you hear a man says, but, meaning there is an issue, he says, but what? Master. Master. We have told all night. And we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fishes. And their net was breaking. So they signal to their partners to help them. And they came and they filled both what? Both. So that they began to sink. They began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, when Simon Peter saw this, he felt or he knelt down on Jesus' knees, Jesus knees, saying, saying Depart from me. For I am a simple man, for I am no worthy. For you to wrought such a miracle in my life. And this afternoon, somebody your miracle awaits you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody your miracle will surprise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody your miracle will back for you in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a passage of what? Jesus. Jesus had gone to the shore to preach the word. But the people say, and the Bible says, the people were too many for him. They pressed on to hear from him. So he saw two boats. He saw two boats. But he went into one boat. Beloved, there is only two kingdoms in the world. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And as we, the church members, or we, the believers, we have every choice to choose. So Jesus chose one boat. And I pray that somebody will choose the kingdom of God. I pray somebody will choose the kingdom of God. I pray somebody will make a choice that will lead you to the places of joy. I pray that the choices you make today will lead you to your glory to tomorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus chose one of the boats. He didn't choose all the boats. He chose one. Beloved, whenever we have to make choices, we have to make clear and conscious what? Choice. Think once and accurate. Make it nice or make it wise. In life, choices is very important. God will use a man on two points. Either on your strength or your weakness. Gideon said, I am the weakest among my family, the least among your family. God needs your availability and not your ability. And Peter was a good fisher folk. So God used Peter on his strength. He chose Peter because he knew how to catch fish. And he says, I will make you fishers of men. Don't worry about your weakness, for God will turn it to your good. He says, for all things work for good for those who are what? called according to the purpose of God. God will use you irrespective of your weakness. God will use you irrespective of your strength. He is the ultimate what? decider. All you need is faith. Somebody tell your neighbor faith. 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 Revelation says what? For lukewarm, sweet and sour, God will spill you out. For me, I'm like God. I don't like sweet and sour. It makes me a bit vomity. God doesn't like sweet and sour. If you want to be cold, be cold. If you want to be hot, be hot. Lukewarm, God will spill you out. And I pray somebody that you shall be warm for God. I pray somebody you shall be warm for God. I pray somebody you shall be warm for God. Fishing is a, 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 a trade or a skilled trade. So God needs a uh, fishermen are very skilled in this area. You need every uh, what experience, knowledge. You have to be aware of the timing and the season in order to make it. So therefore, you as a child of God, if you want to be in this household, if you want to be in this kingdom, you need to be skilled in the word of God. You need to be skilled in the word of God. You need to have a fair understanding of the word of God. And you need your faith on board. Somebody say, I need my faith on board. In order to make it. In order to succeed. All I need is my faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Without the skills and experience, fishermen will cut nothing. Because the fishes come out at a particular time. They, they breed 
they feed at a particular time and you need to have understanding. Beloved, in all your getting, get what understanding. Tell your neighbor, in all my getting, I will get understanding. And understanding thereof says that for you to place God, you need your faith. You need your faith. Peter gave his boat. Peter gave his boat. What are you giving to God? What have you given to God? Both could be his money, it could be his time, it could be his strength, but Peter was willing and ready to give to God. Will you give God your boats? Will you give God your time? Will you give God your money? Or will you be stingy from God? I pray this afternoon that the church will give the little they have to God. I pray this afternoon that the church will do mighty things for God. I pray this afternoon that that which you can do, you do it well. The Bible says, for a man gave to make room for him and take him in presence of what kings. Whatsoever you know what how to do, do with your might. Everybody has a purpose. And everybody is important. There is something in you you can do. Everybody has been created with an assignment. And everybody you can accomplish your assignment if you believe in God. Somebody say, I will believe in God. And I will get my assignments done. I will give God my lifetime. In the mighty name of Jesus. God chose one boat. He chose one boat. It is my prayer. If God has to choose, it has to be you. Amen. It is my prayer. If God were to choose, it has to be you. If God has to make a choice, it has to be you. If God has to choose one person, let it be you, oh God. Let it be your cry in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be your cry in the mighty name of Jesus that whatsoever God or whenever God will make a choice, it will be you. As a matter of fact, David begged to serve God. God said, no, your hands are too bloody. But these days we have opportunity to do things for God that will bluff. We we'll love God. We we'll love God. Let me tell you, if we don't worship, God will raise stones, and I forbid every stone from taking my place. You have to be desperate that you will not let stone to take your place. You will do that which you can, whilst you can, to serve God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Peter had come out of the boat and they were already washing their nets. Do you know what that means? They have what? Already given up. They have toiled all night. They have done what they could, but the Bible says they caught no fish. Some of us in life, we have done all that we could. Some of us in life, we've done the impossible. Some of us in life, we've gone extra mile, but yet situation and circumstances remain the same. I want to tell you this afternoon, your help is on the way. I want to tell somebody your miracle is on the way. I want to tell somebody your miracle is on the way. If only you activate your faith, that which is impossible shall be possible. Peter had given up washing his nets. And the Bible says Jesus told him to trust out. Beloved, fishermen are very, very angry people, especially when they have caught any fish. I come from the seaside. When they have been all night and they have caught no fish and you're asking them to start their boat again, to start their head again and take you back to sea, it will be a very difficult time. But the Bible says Peter did not want complain. He didn't mama. He thrust again into the hole, into the sea. Somebody say, I will launch out one more time. Don't give up yet. Never say never until the bones are rotten. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Situations will be challenging. At times it could be very dry. At times it could be very difficult, but all I say to you, never give up in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the Bible says in Galatians 9, it says, don't be weary in doing good, for in due season you shall what? Reap. And I pray that you will not give up in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you will not give up in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you will not give up in the mighty name of Jesus. Despite the frustration, despite the challenge, despite the difficulty, 
Peter was what? Willing to trust out into the boat. And I pray somebody you will launch out one more time. I pray somebody you will try one more time. I pray somebody you will try one more time. I pray somebody you will try one more time. Irrespective of that which has caused you to give up. The Bible says in Psalms, it says by the rivers of Babylon, when we sat down, we know these people are what? They are worshippers. They are gaining and they are winning with their song. But they got to a place situation caused them to sit down. This afternoon as I speak to you, I don't know that which has caused you to sit down. I don't know that which has caused you to give up. I don't know that which is standing your way, preventing you from going forward. But as David said by my God, I will run through troops and I will leap over a wall. I pray this afternoon that by your God you run through troops. I pray this afternoon by your God you run through troops. I pray this afternoon by your God you will leap over every wall. Every challenge that will come your way. Anything the enemy will bring your way. By your God you will leap over it in the mighty name of Jesus. Some Somebody, it's about time you are leaping over a wall. It is about time you are leaping over a wall. It is about time you are leaping over a wall. That wall of immigration you will leap over. That wall of sickness you will leap over. That wall of lack of education you will leap over. It is your time to leap over. It is your time to leap over. It is your moment to leap over. By God, you will leap over. Something caused them to give up. Washing their nets. That signifies the day is over. When we were little in Ghana, we go to school. When we close, they say, now the day is over. And most of us, we are carrying this in our head. We have given up on ourselves. I want to assure you this afternoon, never give up on yourself. Never hang up on yourself. For the Lord God is on your side. God is on your side. He says, I will be with you to the end of days. For the end of this. These people have tried and they have worn out. And not that some of us we are lazy. We have done a lot. So we give up. We are human, we give up. Your human side tell you to give up. But let your spirit side be activated. <laughs> let your spirit eyes be activated. That there is mighty ahead of you. There is greater things ahead of you. There is a bright future ahead of you. At the end of every tunnel, there is a light. And I say to somebody, your light is coming. I say to somebody, your light is coming. I pray that this afternoon, God will usher you into your light. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible says, Jesus launched out with them. They trust out with Jesus. And Jesus spoke. And I'm wondering what was going in the mind of Jesus and Peter and Co. When Jesus was preaching, this man is wasting our time. You know we haven't caught anything. We've been out all night. And some of us, we murmur. Some of us, we complain. Some of us, we mourn. We mourn. We complain. Not knowing your miracle you are looking for is just close by. I want to encourage you by your faith. Don't mama. The Bible says in all our doing we should do as unto God and not as unto men. Most of us we love doing the things but we complain far too much. We complain far too much. So these people were with God, with Jesus and Jesus was speaking. And when Jesus had finished speaking, I told you don't give up when, until Jesus had given up. The Bible says when Jesus had what, done speaking, he said to them, launch out into the deep. And the experience of Peter will come through here. Peter is a fisher folk. Why Jesus was telling him to launch out into the deep, there wasn't any deep there. Because if they launch out and they are speaking to the people, meaning it should be at this time where the people at the shore could hear Jesus. The deep, nobody could hear because it would have been what? Far. So everything was against what Jesus was saying. Launch out into the deep. They were in the shallow. And you said launch out into the deep. They have toiled all night and you are telling them they should launch out into the deep. Don't forget, Peter was born on the fish on the sea. He was a fisher folk. He has grew and he was an experienced man. He knew the time of the season. He knew the time of the day. And he knew that the sun is out, there wouldn't be any fish. 
Some of us, this is what we see. The things we hear. The things we see. The options we have. Infringe on our faith. Our faith has been dwindling and diminishing because of the things we see. The sickness is there. And you are telling me I am healed. It doesn't make sense. They are in the shallow. And Jesus was telling them, launch into the deep. They have told all night. They have got nothing. And you are telling them to launch into the deep. I don't know what the doctors have told you. But I am here to tell you it's a lie. I don't know that which the lawyers have said, but I'm here to say it's a lie. Yes. The Bible says, let all men be what? Liars. Amen. And only God be truthful one. Has Amen. God said it and would he know what make it? Amen. What is God saying about you? What has God said concerning your life? He has a purpose for you. Everybody can share their opinion. You can give me opinion about my son, but that doesn't mean that's what I'm going to do. Who are you to judge some of the servants? To you they fall, but to the master they stand. Ye, yeah, they will stand. And I pray this afternoon, somebody will stand. I pray this afternoon, somebody will stand. I pray this afternoon, somebody will stand. Peter was very troubled when Jesus said, launch into the deep. The temperature wasn't right for fishing. And some of us, the temperature is hot. We are in hot waters. The things we are going through, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's ever going to end. The stuff that we have been told, it looks like we are, we are doomed. There is no way of return for us. There comes a time in the book of Ezekiel 37. The Bible talks that God called Ezekiel and Ezekiel, it says, Ezekiel, can this dry bones live? The bones were dry. The people were dead. They've been what scattered over there. The bones were dried. Sinus were what dried. Everything was dry. There wasn't any hope anywhere. And the Lord was asking Ezekiel, "Can these dry bones live?" I am here this afternoon to ask you: Do you think your situation will be made well? Do you think your circumstances will come back to life? Some of us, you have even given up on yourself. And I believe the bones in the dry bone valley have given up on themselves. But the Lord said, prophesy. And I'm here this afternoon telling somebody to, to prophesy. Prophesy over your life. Speak goodness over your life. That situation in your life. That challenge in your life. I am here to tell you to prophesy. There is a noise from somewhere coming. There is a wind about to be blown. Somebody you are about to receive new life. Somebody you are about to receive new joy. Somebody you are about to receive a return around. Something brand new is coming your way. For God has said it and he will do it. It. Can this one live? Ezekiel says, Only God thou knoweth. And he prophesied, and there was life. I prophesy over your life. Let there be life in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy over your life. Let there be life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be peace in your life. Let there be joy in your life. Let there be favor in your life. Will there be any challenge which is over thee? Let the hand of God come in your way. Let the glory of the Lord come your way. Peter was troubled. He says, Master, we have taught all night. Nevertheless, I want you to come to the point of nevertheless. Satan might have warned you yesterday, but today I want you to say to yourself, nevertheless. <laughs> oh, the enemy might have taken much from you, but I want you to come to the point of nevertheless. <laughs> oh, the trouble in your way have befed thee. It has been left, right, and center. But I want you to come to the point of nevertheless. I have suffered enough. <laughs> I have been troubled enough. But nevertheless, my God will live it. Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word. Nevertheless, at thy word. That is to say, despite, however, because you have what? Said it. Beloved, your faith might have been trampled over. But as I speak to you this afternoon, I want you to activate your faith. Your faith might have been walked over. But as I speak to you, I want you to activate your faith one more time. 
You might have lost yesterday. You might have been defeated yesterday. You might have been what, pushed over yesterday. But today, I want you to come to the point of nevertheless because of the word. The Bible says the word that we speak is what? It's sharper than any two-edged word sword. The words we speak, they are spirits and they, what? they give life. I speak life over somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak life over somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. I activate every blessings over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every goodness God has for you today, I activate it. Every joy God has purpose for you today, I activate it. Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word. Amen. At thy word. Nevertheless, however, I wouldn't have done so, but because you have said it. Because you have said it. I want you to come to this point. Let go of your fear. Let go of your fear and come to this point that irrespective of how far I have been walked over, God still has hope for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, there is still hope for you in the mighty name of Jesus. There is still hope for you in the mighty name of Jesus. There is still hope for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Never give up on yourself. And I want to assure you this afternoon. If only and only if you believe in God, he will swing the situation to your favor. I will take you one more time. If and only if you will believe in God, he will swing the situation to your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Every odds were against them. Everything at that time were against them. There were too many people at the shore. The noise alone would drive the fishes away. They were at the shallow. Temperature wasn't right for them. The same way as I speak, some of us, we are at a point that we are desperate for God. We are at the point that we need God more than ever. But I want to assure you, if God did it yesterday, he will do it for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody let your faith be heightened. Let your faith be activated. Let your faith be heightened. For God is about to do something new. For God is about to turn things in your favor. For God is about to do the undoable. You might have given up on the situation, but God has picked up on that challenge. He's about to move in your dimension. He's about to move in your dimension. God will swing circumstances to your favor. God will swing challenges to your favor. God will speak for you. He says, do not worry. At that very moment, I, God, will speak for you. All you need is your belief. Peter said, at thy word. Your word have I hidden in my heart. Faith cometh by hearing and by the hearing of the word of God. What have you heard concerning God? He says, I, God, when I say I will do, I do it. Faithful is he who has called thee and he will do it. His promises are yea and it is what? Amen. Whatever God has said, he will do it. Amen. Irrespective of time. Let me tell you something. When God promises you and the promise is not forthcoming to pass, do you know what? Meaning you will live longer. <laughs> yes. Right. Sarah got to the 90s before giving birth. Mm -hmm. So when God promised you and you, are, you have not seen the promise coming to pass, meaning you have a long life because whatever that comes out of the mouth of God comes to pass. Amen. Whatever God said, he brings it to pass. Challenges will take your boldness away. Challenges will take your boldness away. Oh, let me give you an instance. In the days of First Samuel 17, the Bible talks of the Israelites, they went to battle. And when they went to battle, they met people from the Philistine. But when they were going, they were having their faith on board. They were very strengthened and the morale at the camp was very high. But the Bible talks that when they got there and they saw the size of Goliath, their faith what, left. When they saw the magnitude of Goliath, their faith went. I've heard people that they went to interview. And when they saw other people also at their interview, they said, I will not get this job. Who told you? The, the size of the challenge caused these people to lose their hope. But thanks be to David. David came around and David had understanding of his God. 
David knew his God and he believed in his God. So when Goliath came out, he says, you come against me with your might, but I come against you by the power in the name of what? Jesus Christ. The faith you have in you will activate the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Satan mentioned the name of Jesus. The demons, they are not afraid of them. They can mention the name of Jesus as well. But there is power when a believer with faith, when you mention it, it activates that power in the name of Jesus. Yes. So the faith you have in the name, you could mention it. Buddhists, Hindus, when they come to trouble, they mention it. Jesus, Jesus, does it do anything for them? But if you stand as a child of God, with your faith, you mention the name Jesus, there is a power that ignites and the enemies tremble. Somebody have faith in the word of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says what? Well, David came around. And let me ask you, that stone that killed Goliath, wouldn't have killed Goliath if you were the strength of David. David was a boy at the time. So how much strength would he have in his hand? And how well could he gauge to the point that he will miss every day and hit Goliath? It is the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. That was activated by the lips of our David. When challenges come your way, mention the name Jesus. When situations come your way, mention the name Jesus. When you are overwhelmed with difficulties, mention the name Jesus. And miracles will begin to flow your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Peter answered, Master, we have toiled all night. Some of you, I know you have toiled all night. Some of you, your night is years. Some of you, your years is decades. You have done and do a lot in this life, but there is nothing to show for. But the Lord says, I, God, will restore. The days that the earthworm, the days that the palmer worm, the days that the canker worm has eaten, I, God, will restore. May the Lord God restore unto you the lost ten years. May God restore unto you the lost years. May the Lord God restore unto you the lost years. The days that you have lost, may God restore unto you. He's able to do that which he has said he will do. Faithful is he who has called you and he will do for you. Faithful is he who has called you and he will do it for you. God is about to do something new in the life of you. He says if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat of the fruit thereof. And I pray somebody this afternoon, you shall eat of the fruit. I pray somebody this afternoon, you shall eat of the fruit. I pray this afternoon, somebody you shall eat of the fruit. Because of your faithfulness and because of your faith you have in God, that which couldn't be done will be done for you. The Bible says if your faith is as little as that of Master C, you will move mountains. Somebody you are a mountain mover. Somebody you are a mountain you are mountain mover. You are mountain mover. You are mountain mover. You are moving mountains in your life. Challenges that have mounted in your life, you will move them with your faith. Amen. Your faith and your works, hand in hand, you will move them in the mighty name of Jesus. There was a time in the Bible, Matthew chapter 8, there was a captain or commander of the army who went to Jesus. And this man was going to Jesus for the word. But Jesus was willing to go with him. He says, no, speak the word. Speak the word. And Jesus spoke the word. And the Bible says, at that same hour, the word of God is sharper. Beloved, he is quicker than the ambulance. He says, I am the most present help in terms of what? Trouble. God is with you, so The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Don't give up on yourself. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will be with you till the end of days. God is with somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus spoke the word. And the Bible says that servant who was sick got healed. I don't know the sickness you have been entertaining. 
I don't know the sickness you have been harboring, but I speak the word. Let it be healing in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, I sent for the word to touch, to heal, and to deliver. I pray this after let there be deliverance. I pray this after let there be healing. Whatsoever the enemy has brought your way, whatsoever that has sat on your joy, whatsoever that has sat on your promotion, whatsoever that has sat on your elevation, this after by the power of the Holy Ghost will move them. By the word we are moving them. By the word we are moving forward. By the word we are moving forward. The word of God is stronger and is sharper. Faith. All you need is your faith. If you have faith as little as that of Master Seed, you will move mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. You will move mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible talks of what? First, first Kings. 17, we read from 34. There was a widow there. There was a widow there. And when the prophet met this widow, he says, can you make me a bread? The widow said, I have nothing. Before you and God, all I have is a little flour which I am going to prepare for me and my child to eat and die. Some of us, we have come to that point in life that we are waiting for death. We have given up on ourselves. Our faith is gone. There was no what sense of hope. First Kings 17, reading from 13 to 14. I have nothing. I am going to prepare a little loaf for me and my son to eat and die. I don't know if you have, if you have gotten to that point in life. I don't know if you have gotten to that position in life that you are waiting. Because you don't care anymore. You have done everything humanly possible. But situation still remains the same. You have done everything humanly possible. But the challenge remains the same. I am here to tell somebody that God is about to turn it around. I am here to announce to somebody God is about to turn it around. I am here to tell somebody without faith. You wouldn't turn any situation around. So the Bible says the woman what? Obeyed. 13 to 14. The woman obeyed. She went and prepared the bread for the prophet. And the prophet says, your, your flour and your oil will never cease until the rains come. This afternoon, I pray somebody that your flour never run dry. I pray somebody your joy will never run dry. I pray somebody your happiness will never run dry. I pray somebody that your strength will never run dry. In the mighty name of Jesus, whenever there is a need, may the hand of God be with you. So the prophet prophesied, and because the woman had faith, it worked. Because of your faith, things will be opening for you in the mighty name of Jesus. By your faith, by your faith. If you read the book of John 11, the Bible talks that Jesus went into the house of Mary. Lazarus had already died. Bible says that Lazarus had died four days. So at that time, everything was too late. Some of us, everything is too late in our life. Some of us, we have given ourselves time. Some of us, we have what? Mark a mark in our life to say that at this point, at this age, if I am not married at this age, it is finished. That was the situation going through in the minds of Mary. They said to Jesus, have you been around? What? Lazarus wouldn't have died. He waited the fourth day, meaning it was impossible. It was too late for everybody, but God was on time. I am here to tell somebody, situation might seem too late. It might look too late in your life, but God is on time. And God is on time. God lives outside time and works within time. Irrespective of the time you have given unto yourself, God has a time for you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will change the season and he will change the times into your favor. Irrespective. 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 So Peter lets down the, what? the nets. And the Bible says, Lo and behold, there was a mighty cut because of obedience. He obeyed despite the challenges. Despite the odds, he obeyed. He says, at thy word, he let down. And somebody, I want to encourage you this afternoon, if you will try one more time, God will do something new for you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you will give it one more time a go, the Lord will do something for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And there was a mighty cut 
Her next breaking miracle. That was what breaking their nets. And the Bible says they become unto the others. Meaning they had a good relationship on the, with the other people. That is what you desire as a child of God. Your character, your attitude, having a good relationship. So that whenever you come to difficulty, the people God will place in your reach to help you will not deny you. God can ask people to favor you, but they will say no because of your attitude. It is God who appointed Saul by the people who rejected him. If you read Luke 2 52, it says Jesus Christ grew in stature and had favor with God and favor with man. Why did Jesus need favor with men? Otherwise, they wouldn't have listened to him. So God works with men. God works with men. We need to be in good favor with people. We need to be in good relationship with people that God will place in our reach so that it will be easy for your miracle to get to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Peter obeyed and there was a next breaking one. Miracle. This afternoon I'm speaking to somebody that you have to obey the word of God. You have to obey the word of God. Despite your desperation, despite the challenge, I want to ensure you that God is about to do it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to surrender. Peter surrendered. The boat. The boat was not catching any fish in the way. So it was easier for Peter to give it up. Do we give up our life when we have ruined our lives? Or do we give God our youthful ages? Don't wait when you are too old, you can't even go for evangelism before you come to church. Give him your youthful time. Give him your lifetime. Surrender your all unto him. For God is able to do and is able to do. Be on your feet and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost language. I want you to be on your feet and begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray that may God give you stronger faith in the mighty name of Jesus. May God give you a faith unquenched in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Somebody pray this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray.